So spiritual battles are won, as you know, by the, the words we speak. Listen to this scripture. Now I'm going back to the slides. In Matthew 12, uh, 37 in the Amplified, it says, By your words, reflecting your spiritual condition, you will be justified and acquitted of the guilt of sin. And by your words, rejecting me, you will be condemned and sentenced. So when I read that, I'm like, all right, Lord. Your word says that we are victorious. So I want my words to reflect my spiritual condition. What's, my, what's your spiritual condition? What's my spiritual condition? Well, I want it to line up with the word. In Job 22, 28, you will decide and decree a thing. And it will be established for you. And the light of God's favor will shine upon your ways. And then it even goes on to say, which I didn't type it out. And even the ones that you're praying for that are not innocent shall get saved. See, that's the power of our words, the power of our words for souls, the powers of our world is going crazy, right? But God has a plan. You think he's surprised by all what's happening? No, but he's saying, I want the remnant, the church to rise up, take the stand, know who you are, know that it's not over till God says it's over. It may look one way and it may have been decreed a certain thing, but God's saying, I can overcome that thing. I have final say. We all have testimonies here of how God broke through miraculously in our lives. We have incredible testimonies. We can't let what the enemy is saying to us keep us in a funk and hold us back. The word has to have final say. Lord, your word says that I am the head and not the tail. I am not defeated. I am not. Listen, how in the world do you get perfect peace that passes all understanding? It's with the spirit of the Lord, even in the midst of trials, even when you're going through really hard times, because it happens. But the Lord said, listen, I'll give you peace. He says, perfect, in Isaiah, perfect peace will you have when your eyes or your mind are fixed on me. Amen. Not your... Not your problems. In Psalm 34, it says, oh, come, let's magnify the Lord. It didn't say magnify your problems. Right. When you have a magnifying glass, what happens? It, it makes it bigger. Well, the more we focus on what's happening, the worse it is. Well, does, did that ever accomplish anything for anybody here? I know it never did for me. So God wants us to understand that his words are spirit and life. That's what it says in John chapter 6. And Proverbs 23, 7 in the Passion, it says, For as he thinks within himself, so is he. Listen, you need to really get a mindset of who you are more than ever. I said, Lord, I am really meditating on this. I am really imagining myself as this one. That Remember Wonder Woman, that movie? Didn't you love that? I don't think Peter liked it, but I loved it. And so, <laughs> you didn't like it too much. Anyway, but she went around, and she's fighting, and she's doing this and that. And hey, we can do that in the realm of the spirit. What, why is that so dim? That was, that was a metaphor. That was a, a, a something that we can have vision, imagine, see ourselves as for men and women. For men and women. And it's that we walk in the kindness of God, the love of God, and understanding the love of God, but saying, listen, and the Lord's saying, you got victory. You're not defeated. You're not a wimp. You're not, you know, someone that, that's not going to cross over to the other side. That's not who we are. God wants us to know that what is every word from Genesis to Revelation and the promises of God are yes, yes and amen. They're for us. And God wants to wake us out of our slumber. He wants to wake us up out of our sleep. He wants to wake us out of that depression. That it, you know, in Isaiah it says in the prostration, in the depression and prostration in which the enemies try to keep you because he's trying to keep you down and you're saying, but I haven't seen anything. I haven't. Well, maybe you need to shift. Maybe you need to get some counsel and say, why am I going this route? Why isn't anything happening? Remember, God's not the problem. So if we see that that's happening, and it's happened, it's happened to me, it's like, okay, what do I need to do to shift? Where am I at? Am I not listening? Am I stubborn? Am I, am I, my thought process is it idolatrous where we're, we're exalting what you think over what the word of God says. His word says, is not my word like a hammer that shatters. Yeah. Well, the word is you're decreeing, see it shattering strongholds. Whoa. Envision this. In 2 Corinthians 10, I'm going to end, 10, 4, and 5 in the Passion. I'm going to read it to you out of two versions. 
It says, for although we live in a natural realm, we don't wage a military campaign employing human weapons, using manipula manipulation to achieve our, our aims. Instead, our spiritual weapons are energized with divine power to effectively dismantle the defenses behind which people hide. This is, this is what the spiritual way, you understand why the enemy doesn't want you having it. We can demolish every deceptive fantasy that opposes God and break through every arrogant attitude that is raised up in defiance of the true knowledge of God. We capture like prisoners of war every thought and insist that it bow in obedience to the anointed one. I love that. I love that. So we have to war with our words. And so in the King James Version, the way I, I memorize it, is that we have to cast down our imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Now that word imaginations is reasoning. In Joshua 1.8, where it says, you shall meditate on the word of God day and night. Therein you will have good success and you will prosper. That word meditate means to mutter, to regurgitate, but it means to imagine. All right, so what we see, imagination is very important. And our imagination is a womb, and it causes things to get birth, and that's how you develop your faith. You can see it. So when you're meditating on the word, you get that scripture. You see yourself, let's say, like study the Gospels of, of Jesus' healing. Well, does Jesus want all of us to lay hands on the sick? That's for every single one of us, right? Cast out devils, every single one of us. Raise the dead. For all of us, heal the, heal the emotionally wounded, it's for all of us. Well, can you picture when you're laying hands on that person, get the word in you. I'm not talking about vain imagination. I'm talking about meditating on the word and, and seeing Jesus you know, in you laying hands. Because it's not us who's doing it, it's Jesus. See, we have to get our imagination in line with the word. Because a lot, how easy it is for you to imagine wrong. Let's say you get a phone call at 1 o'clock in the morning. It's like, oh my God, is that my child calling me, right? I mean, how many, right? Is that only happened to me? You know, you can imagine something negative right away. But why can't we just imagine the truth? Well, praise God. You know, someone's calling and telling me, I just won $10 million. <laughs> praise God. Like why, right? Don't, doesn't our mind just go to the negative all the time? If I say a red apple, can you see it? If I say you're victorious, can you see you victorious? All right. So words paint pictures in our mind. Can you imagine breakthrough? Can you imagine your mortgage paid? Can you imagine you walking in total and divine health? Can you imagine breakthrough in your life and not defeat? Can you imagine you walking with health and joy, the joy of the Lord, your strength? So worry is meditation going in the wrong direction. Isn't it easy to worry? Is it just me or is it easy to worry, right? I mean, we can all worry very easily. Like, oh my God, the, you know, you see something. Last night when I was up because the TV kept me up, but last night when I was up, <laughs> when I was up, I know I was going to text you to say, wake up. But anyway, <laughs> I forgave her. But, but then I'm sitting there and I hear a noise and I'm like, and I'm sitting there. I'm like, oh my God, is someone trying to break in? And I, I, I said, maybe that's why I'm awake. That was what I thought. But no one tried to break in, and it was fine. It was just a branch. But you see how we get? You know, we, we think negative right away. So if our imagination isn't centered on the word or his love, we go off in the wrong direction. It's so easy. So when that happens, just, just, just take that turn, go right back to the word. No, here's what the word says. Because there's a war. It doesn't mean that you're not a strong Christian. Just don't go off in that direction. Just bring it back. Lord, you can heal my marriage. You can restore love unlike anything I've ever experienced. He can do it. He's a miracle working God. So judge your thoughts. Are they going against the word of God? Where are you at? I said, Lord, I am not going to magnify what's not happening. I'm going to magnify the greatness of who you are. You know, can you see breakthrough? Can you see your business prospering? Yes. Are you decreeing the word? Do you have scripture for your business? Yes. He says it delights him to see his servants prosper. Wealth and riches are in your home. And it says your seed shall be mighty. Your seed may be wayward, but the Bible says that your seed shall be mighty. It says that the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. 
You see, what's the word of God? What, what's the moment that thought comes? You have something that 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 overrides that other thought. If not, you're gonna. That's where it's what's gonna bring you down. So, praise God. Amen. So let's see. Hallelujah. <laughs>